Hi and welcome. Uh, my name is Angela Tillman Sperandio. And I'm Samira Bobana. And we're the founders of HoloFam. Why is it that there are so few women in the graphic design history? And how has the view of women in design changed over time? Because it's easy to see that in the lower levels of design, for example, in design schools, the sexes are equally balanced but the higher up the career you go, the fewer women you find. And why is that? This is the American art director, Chippe Pinellas. She was the first woman to be elected into the New York Art Directors Club Hall of Fame. And the year was 1975. And we, when we tell this to people outside our profession, it usually surprises them, whereas in our profession it hasn't been discussed much at all, until recently. And we think that the Art Directors Club is a good index to show the balance between male and female graphic designers and art directors through history. So this is uh, the 21 women that have, has been, have been elected uh, today and 150 men. And if someone of you see that it's uh, a lot of Don Drapers, it's just because we couldn't find all the, all the photos of men. Although graphic design itself is a relatively young profession, the history of women within design is even shorter. And we believe that there are so few women in, in design today because we lack knowledge about the women who have previously worked in the profession. We believe in the power of role models. We believe that they are instrumental when trying to envision the possibilities of succeeding within this profession or within any profession, really. Me and Samira met at the design school, Forsberg School of Graphic Design, and we started our own uh, design studio, uh, Jatta Smetta, in 2001, directly after school. And after a few years, we started to think about our own future in an industry with very few high-profile women. Our design heroes back then were all men. And, uh, this was what the design history looked like to us, and this was the history of the design that we were taught in, in school. And uh, to be honest, we didn't see it as a problem, because we thought that that belonged to the past, and we were the next generation, we belonged to the future. But after a couple of years, uh, when we uh, discovered that the history of design wasn't even correct, we started to do our own research, just out of uh, curiosity. So when we couldn't find a lot of information online, we uh, went to the archives. We, uh, we scanned the libraries, we phoned older male colleagues and asked them if they could give us the names of any female classmates that they had studied with, and we started to make a list of women. Finally, we selected around 10 names, both famous and not so famous designers, uh, all based in New York. And our choice was subjective. It was designers that we found interesting, uh, that we, we admired, and uh, who had make their, made their marks on design history, credited or uncredited. So we wrote to them, and asked if they wanted to get together for an informal meeting to talk about career opportunities, their, design, their own design history and so on. And to our great surprise, they all said yes. 
So these are the women we met the first time, and they are all, uh, they were all in different ages, from uh, ranging from a, about 60 to uh, Lillian Bassman, who was over 90. That's Lillian Bassman. Uh, so they all had different experiences. They, uh, they had worked in different periods of time. They had uh, uh, different styles, and they, um, they worked uh, in uh, completely different areas, like magazine design, and environmental design, corporate identities, interiors, or book design. So the first trip to New York 2009 was a life-changing experience, both professionally and personally, and it changed the way we see the world. And the generosity of these women gave us insights that would have taken us years to reach through our own experience. Hey, maybe we should just present the uh, designers. That's uh, Karen Goldberg. Um, number two is Lella Vignelli, who passed away just recently. Uh, Janet Frolic. No, oh, sorry. No, actually, it was her husband who passed away recently. We just have, uh, actually, one of the women we interviewed passed away um, last night. So we're in, um, that's what happens when you work with a project like this. Um, that's Janet Frolic, uh, Myra Kalman, Lillian Bassman, who passed away two years ago. Uh, that's a young, young Mary Shanahan. Ruth Ansel, who's been to Stockholm twice, and uh, Tomoko Mio, who also passed away uh, a couple of years ago. When we met these women, it affected us strongly, both emotionally and physically. We got... Oops. Hmm. We got so starstruck. Uh, we got palpitations, sweats, we blushed, and we had problems keeping our voices straight. That's uh, Paula Scher to the left. She's a partner of a design firm called Pentagram. This emotional reaction wasn't anything specifically female. On the contrary, for the first time, we experienced something that we had previously only seen from a distance namely the strong and mutual identification that is common among men. And in a profession with an obvious crown prince culture, and in a system where older men often select younger men that they see themselves in as, they, uh, as their successors, gender has a meaning, and this makes it more difficult for women. And we, we realized that it did matter to us whether a designer was male or female. And meeting these women affected us strongly. And we suddenly understood that knowledge isn't just something that is passed on mechanically, but that there's also great power in identifying with someone like you. If you can see it, you can be it. Coming back to Stockholm after our trip, first trip to New York, we realized that we had collected very interested material uh, and that it was far too valuable to just leave in our own computers. Because we're trained as graphic designers, it felt logical to do something in our own discipline. So we decided to make a book series to share this knowledge. And so far, we published eight books uh, based on the interviews and meetings that we had in 2009. And we really got a sense of uh, the significance a book can have when the Art Directors Club in New York inducted Ruth Ansel into its Hall of Fame. And that's probably the most prestigious award an art director can get. And one of the jury members told us afterwards that our book was on the table when the jury made the, their decision, because Ruth Ansel's uh, work and long career had never been documented before. And the ability to show previously unpublished material has been really rewarding. Uh, many of the designers haven't kept archive of their work, uh, and uh, so a large part of what we've done in the process of making a book is finding the image material. 
going through archives and foundations and collectors and, and so on, uh, both in Sweden and the United States. And uh, we're going to show you some examples of previously unpublished work by Lilian Bassman and Tom, Tom Okomiu. Uh, and we're just going to flip through. Uh, this was really like looking into a, a, a treasure of never uh, discovered material. If you're a graphic designer, this is, this is the golden age of graphic design. This is Lillian Bassman from Junior Bazaar, a fashion magazine for uh, teenagers after the, um, uh, in the 1940s. And what's so special about <clears throat> uh, the approach in it is that the young girls and women, they, they constantly do things and move. They're not just models. Uh, They're in action. Yeah. They go by bike, and that's, I mean, uh, for a woman using a bike, that was really something, I mean, that was a statement to, to be able to move freely. And it's very playful, and it's very, uh, um, it's young in spirit. This is Tomoko Mio, a fantastic um, American-Japanese graphic designer. Um, not very known, not even in the, in the, within the design community. Fantastic work. This is all Tomoko Mio. As uh, the, the project Hall of Fame uh, grew, the number of people involved uh, has increased too. Uh, so, uh, Hall of Fame started with just the two of us, but today it's a highly collaborative project, uh, and we're not only working with, uh, with the books. So, this is what we do now. Um, we have the books, but uh, last year we took the project further, um, and we arrange a seminar, a, a design conference at the Modern Museum of Art, Moderna Museet in Stockholm. And we wanted to create the magic that only happens when people get together and listen to listen, talk and meet. And we wanted to invite some of the most admirable, um, admirable people from the worlds of visual arts, design, communication and fashion of today. And here they are. This is from the two days uh, of the conference. And this is our speakers list. We're still very proud of it. Uh, that's uh, Barbara Kruger, uh, an artist trained as a graphic designer originally. Uh, Cindy Gallup, Ruth Ansel, um, Anne-Sophie Bach uh, from Sweden, Jennifer Daniel, Lucy McRae, Penny Martin from The Gentlewoman, uh, Susan Jung, uh, and Janet Frolic. Today we're also hired as consultants to help create more gender equal seminars or uh, design juries. So we use, we have uh, a broad network um, that we collected throughout the years, so we hired as consultants to to find the right person for seminars or, or juries. We have our web page where we publish everything we researched through the years. So it's like a, I don't know how to say it, a knowledge, bank of knowledge uh, that's, it's for free and it's, uh, it's podcasts and interviews and uh, the book of course, the books. Um, and we have a blog where we publish, for example, we have this series, uh, L'Hommage, where people who, uh, who have uh, committed a lot of time and work to, to uh, tribute someone else is tribute th themselves. Uh, and we also have this uh, feature that if you enjoy our work, uh, 
it's possible to donate money there because uh, that's the only thing that keeps the project alive. That uh, uh, we have a heart at the top. So if you like the the project, please help us because everything, all the editors and everyone is working for free. So it's um, it's a labor of love. This is also a project that wants to create opinion, of course, uh, uh, of these issues. Uh, we have received a lot of a attention, both within the design, his, uh, design industry, but also within mainstream media. So uh, we think that Hall of Fame must have contributed to raising awareness of um, and promoting a discussion. So here is some, um, some of the media that we got. Since uh, 2009, we traveled around the world with this project. We've done around 40 interviews and we've written 700 blog posts. We've given lectures in Sweden and abroad and we've pu published eight books in three years. And we also recorded seven podcasts. So, with Hall of Fam, we tried not only to point out a problem when we discovered that there weren't enough women in design, we tried to find a solution where we actually found them. Instead of focusing on demonstrating that they weren't there, it seems obvious to us that the only way to inspire the notion that it's possible to work a lifetime in design or in any field is to show examples of the, woman, the women who actually do or, and did. So when we started design school 15 years ago, we weren't aware of gender issues at all, and we didn't define ourselves feminists. But our choice of profession has made us both feminists and devoted advocates of equality. So this project has given us new references in terms of design and broadened our perspective on design history. A design history filled with women that had often been innovative, fearless, and have significantly contributed to the develop of our profession. And this is what we want to share with you. Thank you so much. Thank you.